morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to class. Welcome to Florida Trade Academy. We always want to talk about safety first, so the one way you came in is the one where we leave out. We never had an emergency, but I always want you to know where everything is. Our restrooms are all the way down the hall as if you're going to exit. We will be going there as a group to wash our hands, so you'll see where the restrooms are at that point. And then we do have nourishment for you, so if you start to feel like you need something to drink, you're welcome to get up at any time. We also have coffee. So any questions about the general layout of the building? As we progress during the class, you'll see the clinical room, and that's when we start our clinical skills. I have a warning for you. The first hour of the class is boring. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and yawn and stretch now, get it out of the way, because if we don't get through all the paperwork and the whys and the hows, if I just teach you skills, you won't know the process and you're not gonna be as successful. So again, welcome to class. My name is Eunice Mathis. I've been a nurse now, I don't wanna lie, 24 years. I've been doing exam prep classes for 15 years. So what I'm teaching you is not real world. I'm teaching you what you need to pass the test. After you pass the test, that's when you're gonna be partnered. Your test is always going to say you're partnered with a charge nurse. I hate to tell you, you're not partnered with a charge nurse. You're partnered with a senior CNA, somebody who's been doing the same job you've been doing for a while. But for your test, you're partnered with a charge nurse. That person is going to move fast, teach you how to take care of 15 patients, and to also get a break. <laughs> if you do what I'm teaching you here, you're never going to get a break, <laughs> but you're doing exactly what's needed, the perfect care whenever you have a nurse with a clipboard who's evaluating you for the state of Florida. So I'm teaching you textbook. The job will teach you real world, plus you get paid to learn it at that point. So welcome to class. As you introduce yourselves, um, if you'll please say your name, the reason you're taking the course, and maybe a fun fact. So a fun fact about me, is that I actually have a certification in healthcare simulation. What does that mean? There's a glass mirror when you're in nursing school and there's somebody behind that mirror who's operating the mannequins, making them cry, making them scream, making them give birth, who harasses the heck out of you. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my fun fact. All right, and so would you please introduce your name, um, introduce yourself, tell us your first name, the reason you're taking the course, and maybe a fun fact like a pastime. Hobbies. If we looked at your Facebook, are you a fashionista? <laughs> what do you do for fun? Just watch movies and keep going. <laughs> do you watch horror movies? Yeah, I'm See, it. <laughs> I still have um, nightmares. Like yeah. after I am legend, every time I walk back the house at, at, after dark for like two years, I swear I saw people in your arms and so no, I don't do horror movies. So that is a fun fact. I will be hugging your arm at the end. All right, so next please. Hello everyone, I'm Portia. Um, I, I have been a preschool teacher for oh, years, years. I would say, I don't even, over 15 years um, and I'm looking for a career change and I think I'll get, let me not, I'll, I'll, I'll stay where I'm moving. No problem. I think um, I'll get the same, I love caring for people, helping people and I, I think I'll get the same uh, fulfillment yes. with um, Simon CNA and then and eventually moving if I, I'm, I'm sure I'll like it but I think I'm going to go on to be a nurse. Very proud of you. Because mm -hmm. having a career change after 15 yes. years is hard. People get stuck. <laughs> and, and I want you to know you can pivot at any time. Do mm -hmm. not be afraid to pivot. Mm -hmm. So anytime someone asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up? Most adults mm -hmm. who are old don't know what they want to be when they grow up. Mm -hmm. They just like switch it up every five years. Mm -hmm. So um, as you are looking for jobs, even though you may not have personal care experience, the fact that you have been caring for little snotty nose kids for 15 years. <laughs> you've dealt with injuries, choking, so you've dealt with all of that. Um, so if you wanted to stick with pediatrics, that would actually be good. So you all can work anywhere with other nurse, including jails, um, pediatrics, mm -hmm. hospitals, so don't limit yourself. So when someone says they don't like nursing or um, CNAs work hard, my question is where have you been working? Mm -hmm. Because there are so many different opportunities, you just have to choose the path that's best for you. So welcome. Next please. Hi. Oh, hold up, fun fact. Oh, I love to travel. Um, my last big trip was Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hold 
her arm at the movie theater, <laughs> get her to book my flight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my husband's arm. I don't know nothing. You just I go, just, yeah. He's like, I'm like, when do we leave again? I don't know until like, yes. So that's his job. That is good. All right, so next, please. Hi, everyone. My name's Shandra. And for me, with CMA, it's a career change, something different, something I live and learn. And I like, like, people that need that need my help a little bit. Um she said a little bit. Mm-hmm. Lord <laughs> <laughs> So that's called assisted living facility. Because you <laughs> work in the hospitals and you all glamorize the hospitals and I'll make sure you say your fun fact. Hospitals are cool, but they're twelve hour shifts and they're long days and I need you to work a job that actually lets you work around your family schedule because you still want to have some quality of life. So while we all glamorize the hospitals, you can do assisted living facilities, make just as much money. You can do home care, make just as much money. The only difference is when it's time to travel, if you think about being a traveling CNA, that's when you're gonna wanna have that hospital experience. So, all right, we're gonna take care of people who need you just a little bit, but (laughs) what's gonna be the fun fact? <laughs> Can you beat him in video games yet? That'll be like the thing that gets him. Uh, with my son, instead of playing video games, he fights. Oh. <laughs> I am so embarrassed, y'all. I took my son to sign up for karate because he didn't gain a little bit of weight because I've been teaching night classes and I'm like, Lord, I got to do better with his life. <laughs> The 85-year karate master is like, why don't you sign up? I was like, oh, man. So I'm going to be a 46-year-old white belt of karate with a whole bunch of kids. <laughs> <keep me up. laughs> As I'm funny. <laughs> so I'm going to need some of your moves, all right? Just teach me what to do. All right, so next, please. Welcome to class. Hi, my name is Kia. Um, I decided to brush up on my CNA. I got a CNA back in 1997. Um, I grew up in healthcare with my mother being an RN and my grandmother. Um, so I've been pretty much in healthcare all my life. <laughs> and this is all I know. And um, so I wanted to go back to school and, you know, brush up on things and get it back. Um, and my fun fact is being a kid at heart. <laughs> I'm yes. always a kid. I love playing with the kids, bounce houses, and all the <laughs> stuff like that. I've I never been thinking about out. my joints. I mean, they're like, they're like, go skating. And I'm like, no, nah, I know how much deductibles cost. So. Well, I have nine grandchildren. Oh. So they're always like, me, mom, come play with me. That's what keeps you so young. Yes. yes, yes. Well, welcome to class. All right, last but not least. Hi, all. My name is Michelle. And I am in this class because I've always wanted to work in healthcare. I want to be a RN in the future. So I decided to start here. I work at um, an assisted living, but I am a server there. I met one of the CNAs there, and she kind of gave me that push to go yeah. out here and be a CNA. And my fun fact is um, I grew up in the Caribbean, and I moved to the U.S. Usually in the front of your book is a table of contents, and if this was a real book, this is my workbook for class, it'll have an index in the back where you can look up terms. So anytime you can't find something, just refer back to the table of contents, and it'll help you find what you're looking for in our workbook, okay? When you turn to page um, four, go ahead and turn the page. All right, so when you turn to page four, is there anyone here who did not watch the orientation video? Because that means I can speed this up. All right, so page four, we're just going to. I've been at work. You've been at work. All right, so what we're going to do is 
because you still need to know how to um, prepare for your exam, how to apply for it, is whenever you're not at work, go back to that email, it's gonna say orientation, and then it's gonna show you how to register for your test, because it's just some things that'll take too much time, right? So, but we'll, we'll get you there, we'll get you there. So attendance is a two-day class. You all try to attend both days, because I only offer the courses, the weekend courses like every other week, and then we're getting close to the holiday season. My goal for you all, if you can afford it, is for you all to be tested within three weeks. Get your CNA license, get it out of the way so you can start 2024 with some job skills and with a new certification. So, and um, you can just pretty much transition from one role right into the next role at your location. <laughs> cell phones for all adults, keep your cell phone on vibrate or on a low tone. If you need to answer your phone call, please go outside the door into the lobby area and answer your phone call down. Otherwise, we're going to hear your whole conversation. I'm going to chime in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so smoking. This is a smoke-free facility, as will most of your work locations. Physical and mental disabilities, we usually don't have those issues. Sometimes we have students who have emotional disabilities. But if you see a skill twice, um, and I know that you're not catching on, you're going to be the person who I have performed that skill last. Some people can always go first. They get it the first time. Some people need to watch it more. Usually after two or three times, you have to go home and practice because that's not what this course is for. This is an accelerated course, but we have so many videos online until once you see it and touch it once, if you can just go back home and review it, you should be skilled at it. Unfortunately, the hospitals are too busy and they are short staffed. So when that senior CNA shows you something twice, you can't be like, let me see it one more time. <laughs> So usually it's see one, do one, and by the third time, you should be ready to teach one. See one, do one, teach one. We do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship here because I'm not preparing you for a CNA exam. You think you signed up for a CNA prep course. I'm preparing you for nursing. So in nursing school, you're going to have one nurse educator with 40 to 50 students. She does a global overview and then she pairs you up and you all learn from each other's mistakes, okay? So this is a safe learning environment. Yes, sometimes I will fuss at you, but I only fuss at you when you do really, really crazy stuff. Like if you're cleaning the mannequin's vagina and then you let the cloth touch your chest. Ew. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so completing the course successfully. As with almost everything, your success greatly depends upon your motivation and effort. Students who are <coughs> on time, Pay attention, ask questions, and participate as expected should do well. We sincerely hope you enjoy this course and gain valuable information for your future. So page five talks about our Google resource page. And once the camera's off, I'll make sure everybody has, um, has access to it. We have our YouTube channel, but then we have the Google resource page. The Google resource page gives you access to more practice questions. I cannot go over hundreds of practice questions while I'm in this class, because we only have two days. And so this class is skill heavy. But when you're home, when you're washing dishes, whenever I go to Ileano's to get coffee, I know that's a 10 minute wait. I make all my little TikTok videos or whatever while I'm in the line. You all could be actually listening to practice questions anytime you have free time. So let's go to page six. So page six, we're talking about contacting your course instructors. We are accountable to each other. What does that mean? I'm here to help you get to your test. Once you have a test date, I need for you to correspond with me to let me know, hey, Miss Eunice, I have a test date. I usually always text you and say the same thing. Congratulations, do you have any questions? Because if I can answer your questions before your test, you're more likely to be successful. I'm letting you know now that if our students fail the examination, they fail hand washing. Lately, we've had students fail in the written test because people don't like to read. I can do everything for you except for read. So there are different options for the written test. You can have an audio test that will be read to you. And for me, the bottom line is if you're a good caregiver and I'm a patient, I don't need you to read a book to me. I need you to make sure I stay dry, that you feed me on time. So I'm okay with those who have reading challenges, but I need for you all to be able to read enough to pass this test. Okay, so most back, back before the pandemic, everybody was passing the written and the clinical. But now that people are not reading as much, they're TikToking and doing everything short, 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 we're seeing some of the um, some of the challenges. All right, so you all are gonna pass both your written and your clinical tests. Promise me. Yeah, I promise, love you, go ahead. 
Again, most of the people pass the first time. If you don't pass everything the first time, when you go back, you have to pay for the section that you did not pass. The goal is for you to pass everything. If you have to retake the clinical exam, it's $120. If you have to retake the written exam, it's 30. So that's kind of like the importance. I need for you to, we're skill heavy, because if you fail the written, you have to pay that the test, um, the clinical, you have to pay more money. My phone number, I've already given that to you, so if you have any questions, make sure you text me. If you call, I may not be able to answer texting. If I don't respond to you right then, what I'll usually do is I will um, save your number, I will pin it, I will pin the message, and as soon as I get an opportunity, I will respond back to you, so nothing is missed. Our social media sites, yes, we have Facebook, we have YouTube, and then we have the Google resource page. If there are any changes to skills, if I know that you took a course within the last two to four weeks and there's been a skill that has been changed, I will notify you via email. So Chandrell, <laughs> y'all please check y'all emails because um, <laughs> we, we do email you a lot, but um, just check them at least, you know, I would say once every other day because you don't want to miss anything from us. And going forth, it's going to be Prometric. Prometric is the agency that actually administers this, administers the CNA exam. And if you miss their emails, you miss your test date. Job referrals. If you can't find a job at this point in your life, it's because you don't want a job. But if you need nurse units to refer you to a place of employment, I have a lot of um, opportunities in home care. So home care is starting off 17, 18, 19 dollars an hour. It's just you and one patient, but again, it's not hospital. So you figure out what's best for your schedule, but home care could be um, one hour shifts, four hour shifts, eight hour shifts, 12 hour shifts, 24 to 48 hour shifts, where you can literally be in someone's house for the weekend and you take care of them or their kids. Cause it could be a parent who wants to go out of town, but they need someone there with their, you know, developmentally disabled child. And you could be that caregiver. Any questions there? Page seven at the top. Hi, can I get you to read course orientation? Is it A? It's A. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, ma'am, the paragraph. Uh, it gives you a better idea of what to expect and to assist you during your personal study time. The following is a course outline of the skills you will perform each day. This course will focus on demonstrating the proper techniques of skills. So studying and active participation that require to uh, require in order for you to practice later for your certified nursing assistant system. Yes, so we'll be practicing here in class and then you take what you learn in class, practice at home, and then all that practice <clears throat> together, by the time you get to the test site, you should be more com confident. Um, there's going to be a nurse there with a clipboard. There's supposed to be two, but there's a nursing shortage right now everywhere, even with the testing. So there may only be one nurse who's doing your evaluation. If you practice, you'll be more confident and people who are more confident are able to speak with the nurse, are not nervous, and they're also able to speak to the other um, testers there. When you take your test, you're not uh, performing your skills on a resident in the facility. Just like we're doing here, you're performing your skills on each other. Except for if the skill involves nudity, that's when they'll use the medical manager. So these are the skills we're gonna be learning over two days. So we have two busy days, everybody. Page eight. If you'll pick up your handy dandy highlighters, I need you to start highlighting some information for me. If you'll please highlight Prometric, their phone number and their website. Prometric, their phone number and their website. If you all do not have a current background screening, um, I can set the machine up to model and do your backgrounds. But if you are um, unable to get them done tomorrow or you don't want them done tomorrow, there is another company I can refer you to, especially if you're outside of Jacksonville, and they do um, the fingerprint internationally. Okay? But if you're in Georgia, you would have to get the fingerprints done here. All right, so how often do you travel back and forth? Not that often. All right. So what we'll do is, is if you're here and you want us to do your fingerprints, I need you in the building tomorrow at 7:45. Otherwise, you're going to be the last one to get your fingerprints done, and that means you'll be here after three. Even if you can't afford it, let's just get the scans done. I won't transmit them until you actually pay. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right, Florida Department of Health, everybody. 
Their phone number is there because the day you pass your test, you get two pieces of paper, one for the clinical, one for the written. It's going to let you know whether or not you pass or fail. Your license is issued from the Florida Department of Health. Once you let me know you've passed your exam, this long website, I can either send you that link, but usually three days later, we can find your license number online. So you'll have your license number days before you ever have your physical license in the mail. Why is that important? You can update your resume. You can start interviewing. Okay. Basic life support versus CPR. The difference is the audience. So we use the term CPR very broadly. When you think of CPR, I want you to think of one person being in the house without sufficient equipment. So if you're a sitter or a caregiver and you're taking care of somebody, you don't have a team there. You don't have an AED or defibrillator there. That person calls 911. And when the paramedics come in, they come in as a team and they have all of the life-saving equipment. So CPR, layperson, basic life support, what you see on TV shows like ER, where there's six people around the bed, someone's doing compressions, someone else managing the airway, someone else applying the AED pads. That's the difference between the two courses. So as a healthcare provider, as a future nurse, um, you may say the term CPR, but what you actually need is basic life support. And some of you all have paid for the basic life support course. What we'll do is at the end of the class, we'll get you scheduled. That course is not conducted this weekend. That course is conducted at another time. Any questions there? So now we will have you read, Portia. Would you please read what to do after you submit the application to Prometric? Okay. Take your bank account and three business names to make sure the funds have been removed from your banking account. Your application will not be processed without payment. And the next one, please. Schedule your digital live scan fingerprints with Florida Training Academy. There are, fin there are fingerprinting sites located in Jacksonville and Nashville. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And now, Shandrill, would you read the next two? One week after your fingerprint and your background has been completed, please contact please contact Pro Pro Prometric Prometric at 888-72, I mean 277-3500. And requirement about your test date, keep calling every week until you have your exam date and location provided to you. Via phone. Via phone. All right, and may I pause you right there? They hate that I tell you all that, but I feel that if you send somebody $155, um, I want you to be on top of your test date because you don't get to choose your test date. They choose the test date for you. And so if you have kids, you have traveling issues or concerns, we want to make sure that you're calling them so that you can get your test date quicker. So one week after everything is done, you call them. People who don't call are left in limbo for 60 to 90 days. And we don't want you being left in limbo. Or like one student who was not checking her emails. So she contacted me and every time she contacted me, I say, well, what did Prometric say when you contacted them? I'm always gonna put that back on you because you all are adults. What did they say when you contacted them? By the time she checked her email, her test was three days away. Yes. <laughs> So instead of texting me saying, hey, Miss Eunice, I'm gonna need you to pick up the phone and call and inquire and check your emails. Because once you pay for everything, you should start receiving an email um, thread or tread and you wanna make sure that you're not gonna miss your test date. If you miss your test date or if you try to reschedule within five days of your test, they charge you the full testing fees all over again. No forfeit. All right, so next please, would you read for me, um, Kia, the last paragraph? Do not wait for an, a miss, your admission letter to be emailed to you. Pick up the phone and inquire about your exam date so that you can pay to schedule, reschedule or if necessary. The longer you wait to call, the less control you have over your test date and you may be charged additional fees. If you miss your exam appointment, all of the fees paid are forfeited. Clear as mud. We're going to be there on time. What is on time? Is on time on time? Yes. No. What's on time? 30 minutes before. 30 minutes before. Even with traffic in Jacksonville on a Monday, raining morning. 
You take all of that into consideration. So that means if you have to leave your house two hours early, depending on where you are, you leave early because if you arrive to the test site at 9 a.m., which is the time your test starts, you are technically late because your test started at 9 a.m. Okay, let's go to the next page. We're gonna skip past page nine. You can read that in your study time at home. And we're now on page 10. All right, so those handy dandy highlighters, we need you to arrive that first paragraph. You're gonna to arrive to your test site. How many minutes before your exam appointment? 30, 30, 30 minutes. minutes. All right, and it says your test starts promptly at 9 a.m. And you will need the following items in order to get into the test site. You need your admission letter, which is the letter that was emailed to you. And you'll need two forms of ID. Your two forms of ID can be primary IDs. Those are usually government issued that have a picture. It cannot, it should not be expired. So it could be your military, your driver's license, your state ID, it can even be your passport or any of those two. The secondary ID won't have a photo. So that could be like your bank or ATM card. Just make sure you sign the back of it. I'm gonna ask them that you be careful if you bring your birth certificate or your social security card, because usually if you get married, your names are not gonna be the same. And so if the names don't match, you're gonna say you're two different people and you forfeited your test names. All right, so what to wear is in the center of the page. So, Rochelle, would you please tell us what we're gonna to wear to our test piece? Paragus two green. It's right above it. It's in parentheses. There we go. Uh -huh, so the bold area, just read that for me first. Oh, mm -hmm. what to wear, medical uniform, socks, athletic shoes, and a mask. And a mask, you all, because the COVID rates have been increasing, so they've been requiring some of you to wear masks. So make sure you take one to the exam site. And now, would you read the rest for me? Thank yes. you. Candidates taking the clinical test, uh, the clinical skill test, are required to wear flat, non-skid, close-closed shoes. It is recommended that a uniform or scrubs uh, be worn on that day of testing. Candidates may also either wear or bring a watch with a second one. However, our students are encouraged not to wear a watch to avoid possible recontamination during the hand washing skill. Okay, so here's an example, everybody. If I have to take a patient's pulse, I'm supposed to be holding their pulse and looking at the second hand of my watch for one full minute. When you have an Apple or a Google watch, what happens to your screen after a few seconds? It goes, so nursing school, CNAs, I don't need you having fancy watches. I need you to have the old fashioned watch that has the, the multiple hands on it so you can actually do your job. That's for the real world, for the test site, if I have this watch on, and let's say it was a watch with a second hand, if I can't wash my wrist, I put myself at risk of failing hand washing because I couldn't do my job because the watch was in the way. If I raise the watch up, and it falls back down on my cleanse area, what has happened? Recontaminated. So for your test, if you're somebody who just feels like you have to have a watch, keep it in your pocket. But you and your nurse will be using a clock on the wall, and that's been sufficient for 15 years, okay? Next page, you can read that one at your leisure at home. Let's turn to page 12. Page 12, I will back to you. Could you please read um, clinical skills examination? The computer will randomly select three skills related to the quantity of clinical skills exam. Additional skills that will increase it will be the use of gloves and cover hand washing procedures. You will be ordered a minimum of 31 minutes up to a maximum of 41 minutes in order to perform your skills. At the completion of your examination, you and your partner will take roles and go perform your skills. My skill total with gloves and hand washing. If a skill involves nudity, the role of the dresser will be played by a medical manager. Thank you so much. Hand in any highlighters. Go ahead. I need you to highlight how many minutes do you have for your test? What's the range? 31 to 41. 31 to 41. Including hand washing and gloves, how many skills must you perform? Five. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So if you have 41 minutes, is it your computer's skill as well as helping your partner complete theirs? So, oh, so what happens is after you get, you have your skills card that has your skills. Mm -hmm. Once you have completed your five skills within 41 minutes, 
you then switch roles and then he or she will get the same not the same skills but the same process they'll get their card and then they get their 31 to 41 minutes to perform the skills on you i'm glad you brought that up be prepared to be to the test site all day especially if you're here in jacksonville um, there was a group a few weeks ago who didn't leave until after 6 p.m so it could be a long day because again there's a nursing shortage and who evaluates the cnas the nurses did i ask your question perfect all right so uh portia would you read written exam the written test is taken on the computer and consists of 60 multiple, cho multiple choice questions that evaluate your overall knowledge and skills in providing safe and competent care. The test is 50 scored questions and 10 unscored items used, used for the statistical analysis. Statistical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so they're put in test, future test questions. Mm -hmm. They're testing you to see if they can use these test questions in the future. Oh, so okay. that's what they're doing. Yeah. Statistical analysis. You will have 90 minutes to complete the test. All right, candidate and highlighters. How many questions? How many minutes? 60 questions and how many minutes? 90 minutes. And then last, Andrea, would you read audio test for us? The written test can be taken in a take, taken in an auto formation. During an auto test, you will be able to hear the questions read to you and reading. Oh, while reading and answering questions on the computer, you may reply questions as many times as needed. The auto Say audio. The audio. The audio. The audio. What? Administration. Administration may be helpful for can, can, I can't even talk. So candidates. Candidates who have a reading disability, listening, listed, limited, limited reading skills, or those who concern English. Consider. I consider, got you. I got you. We're, we're the, this the is a safe language. learning environment. The second language can, candidates who would like to take the audio test should select this option on the application form. Yes, I don't want you to have any reason to fail, so you all do not feel embarrassed. If you want those questions read to you while you're reading them, you select audio. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so on page 13, advice to help you pass a written examination. The first is to take the written exam seriously and study the written exam as well as the clinical test. I need you to practice questions nightly and look up unfamiliar medical terms. So turn off that TV, watch these questions. Actually, you can uh, watch the videos that I have with the questions. Watch them on mute. Pause it. Then that way you can read the question because I have the text there. Yes, I'm giving the rationale, but just pause it and then see if you understand the rationale. If not, go to your handy daddy phone, type in whatever term, and then usually I'll read it, but I don't always understand it by reading it. Click images. And then it's like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Now I understand it better because I actually saw it. There's only so much we can do in a two-day class. My cousin, over a decade ago, she took the two-day class, passed her first job, like I said, over a decade ago, was making $17 an hour to take care of somebody who had a trach and a feeding tube. It's only so much I can teach you here. It's only so much you're gonna teach you in CNA school if you went for 120 hours, and more than likely you won't learn trach and feeding tubes. I sat right there with her on YouTube. And so when she went in, yes, the family had to teach her, but she was more confident first by just watching it because we have to get you to express your feelings without showing it on your face. So when someone has a trach and the mucus and stuff, I need for you to get that out of the way. And so, so a way to desensitize you is actually see it in a video form first, right? So if there's something you don't understand, research it and then click images. If you still don't understand it, click video. And I'm sure there's a video teaching you how to do it. We teach you a lot, but again, we can only do so much in two days. Next, do not change your answers. Don't second guess yourself. Always select the option that will be the safest for you and those in your care. So for those of you all who have experience, throw it away. 
the ones who have experience sometimes don't do as well on the test because they know how they did stuff and it was really fast. Mm -hmm. Really fast is not safe. So if it's something that's going to ask you uh, maybe to change your gloves twice during one skill, we're talking about test questions, more than likely that's the right answer because that was the safest. It wasn't the fastest. You actually had to slow down and change your gloves after you took off the dressing, wash your hands and put on new gloves before you apply your new dressing. That prevents what? Cross what? Contamination. So the way you see stuff done in the real world, a CNA has 15 patients. Not saying it's right or wrong, I'm not gonna judge anybody, but usually they don't do it the safest, they do it the fastest. Mm -hmm. Avoid answers with words such as always and never. Healthcare is individualized, and we rarely take a one-size-fits-all approach to patient care. You all, horses are not allowed in the hospital. Who agrees with me? Have you ever seen a horse in the hospital? Somebody who's terminal. They're dying of wishes. I want to see my horse before I die. The medical staff, we're going to get that patient with all of his tubes and everything down to that lobby. That horse is going to stick his head through that door. <laughs> we're going to make sure that that patient is happy. Healthcare is individualized. So we don't say always, we don't say never. I have to consider what your needs are. And yes, that was a, um, a harsh reality. But yes, we'll be like, oh, pets can't come. If that's your dying wish, we're going to let you do it. Okay. And hospice is a great place to work. So if you've never considered hospice, I just can't do pediatric hospice. Um, one of the children's hospitals here, that's where the kids who are terminal would go. But if you allow someone to die with dignity, we teach you CPR, we teach you all this other stuff. But some people don't want all those heroics. They just want to be able to go in peace. And so it's actually, it's actually an honor to be with somebody in their last moments. So hospice is not a bad place to work also. All right, that. We're going to avoid answers with, um, avoid answers with words such as always and never. We're going to look for another option if we see those as our options. And actually, know the role of nursing assistant. You are not the nurse. Notify the nurse in case of an emergency or if there are changes in your patient's condition. All right, here's our scenario. Your patient who's always calling out, who's always bothering you, she's been quiet for two hours. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. 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 You go in the room, she's on the floor. But fortunately, she's still breathing. What do you do? Call the nurse. Call the nurse. She's 400 pounds. There is a puddle of urine that's preventing you because you don't want to fall in it from pressing the panic button, the alert button. How do you call for help? Scream. Scream what? Help. Help. Do not scream nurse. There could be a doctor next door. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, we don't care who comes. We just know that we need help. And that person who comes to help, because if you're in the nursing home at night, how many nurses, LPNs, do you think there are on the night shift in a nursing home? Mm -hmm. Usually one. If you can get two, that means there must be two different wings. That means there's a lot of patients. So if you're in room one and your nurse is in room 30, you screaming nurse is not going to help you. I need for you to scream help. It doesn't matter who helps to go get that nurse. All right, so the nurse is in the room, everybody. We put some towels on the floor. We get this patient up, team lift. We got four people. We get her up back to the bed. What's the CNA's responsibility? Clean her. Clean her, what else? Clean the area. Make what probably sure made her done. fall on the floor or what made her go to the floor in the first place? She needed something. She needed something, so she slipped. Let's talk about um, hemodynamically. What would make people go to the floor? Blood supply. What do we? What, what does the CNA do to monitor um, their hemodynamics? I'm not trying to give you the answer. Take blood sure. pressure. So I need before you start washing them, we need to get some vital signs. So usually that is the CNA's priority. Yes, you're gonna have a nurse there directing you, but I kinda of need you thinking about critical thinking and what you should be doing. I've called this nurse, we get this patient in the bed, I'm not gonna look at my nurse and be like, you wanna give a bath now? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to put that blood pressure cuff on, put the pulse ox, the oxygen reader on their finger, and yes, if they're a diabetic, your nurse may say go out and get a glucometer, you can check their blood sugar. After we find out what caused this person, make sure that they're stable, then we can focus on giving them a bath. And you and your nurse is like a team. It's a really good team. Because while you're there doing the vital signs, the nurse runs out, 
call the doctor, get some pain medicine, get some bandages, come back in. Once the nurse does that, then she can go back out again. So you two take turns taking care of that patient. What do you document? You only document what you saw. So what did you see when you walked into the room? That the patient was on the floor, so you have to document the um, patient that she fell. Can't say and, she fell. Well, because she could have just yeah, she slipped. just slid. So yeah, the document that in her vital signs. Perfect. So what you want to document is what you saw. If you didn't see her fall. And if you did see her fall, my question as a nurse is, well, why didn't you catch her? <laughs> <laughs> so, patient found on the floor. Um, nurse called to the room. Assisted patient to get back into the bed. Vital signs such and such. Nurse at the bedside with the patient. It's important for you to document just like it's important for the nurse to document. Because I'm here to protect my license. I can't protect my license and your license. Mm -hmm. So learning how to document and making sure you actually notify the nurse and document that you notify the nurse will help protect you. All right, so the next one is prioritize care. Learn how to prioritize care. Taking the resident's vital signs may be more of a priority than giving someone a bath or keeping them comfortable during an emergency. Example, a recent fall. Take the vital signs first and once the resident is stable, then you can give them a bath. Don't forget to do what, everybody? Document. Document. If you do not document your findings, you have no proof to support the care that you provided. And now to help you pass this test, I need you to develop a study plan. Practice a few skills and review a few questions daily. And if you have tests and anxiety, research videos on how to reduce your anxiety and how to improve your focus and confidence. Practice will help you with your confidence, okay? And I need you to write a note. At the very bottom of page 13, write this note. I said our students, if they're going to fail the test, what's the reason they failed? The clinical test. Hand washing. So the note I need you to write is wash your hands. <laughs> It sounds so simple. You all get in front of that nurse, you learn every skill, you forget the process. Before and after a skill, you must wash your hands. It's almost time for our break, everybody. Page 15. We've got about 10 more minutes left. All right, so this is one of Miss Eunice's acronyms. Page 15, I want you to highlight HCC. Page 15, highlight HCC. What does HCC stand for? Mm -hmm. All right, so everybody say it together. Mm -hmm. Hand washing, curtain, mm -hmm. and call bell. So when you're in the room, it's going to be your nurse and also your partner at the test site. In a traditional hospital, though, or a nursing home, let me rephrase that, um, you don't have hand sanitizer at the testing site. In the real world, we use hand sanitizer in order to sanitize our hands unless our hands are obviously dirty, or if the person has a germ that's not killed by the hand sanitizer. For example, when COVID-19 first came out, they were like, you can't use this, you can't use that, you can't use that, because it hasn't been proven to kill COVID-19. We need you to wash your hands. So I'm gonna pretend as if I'm entering. If this is the door in the hospital, there would be a hand sanitizer station in the hall at the door. So I would say that would be foaming in. After I get to providing care, there will be a hand sanitizer station inside of the patient's room. We call that foaming out. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's in the hall, if they're monitoring your hand washing, they should be seeing you coming out the room doing this to your hands with the hand sanitizer. That's how we know that our caregivers are doing a good job in keeping their hands clean. Test site. When I knock, I want you to say, come in. Come in. Hi, good morning. My name is Eunice. I'm your CNA today. I'm here to take your pulse. Is that okay? Yes. Before I begin, let me go wash my hands. Test site. You literally have to go wash your hands. After your hands are clean, you can touch whatever else you want. And some of our students start um, getting confused. They're like, oh my God, Miss Eunice, you washed your hands and now you have to go touch the curtain and touch the call bell. News flash. I'm going to be touching the whole human. So if I was worried about my hands getting contaminated, what would I put on top of my hands? Gloves. For you to pass your test, I need you to make hand washing your focus, your priority. Because if you do this skill and your hands are dirty, what's gonna be the outcome of your test? Fail. Yeah. So once your hands are clean, you can touch whatever you want to in the room. So I'm gonna remove the call bell, I'm gonna close the curtain. That's the introduction part. Hand washing is first because it fails you. All right, so let's go ahead and read page 14. If I could, please get you, um, Rochelle, to read practice of steps one through eight. Yes. Knock on the door and enter the room. Greet 
you've been on certified, they're green. Full pet names, simple honey, sugar, or baby. Identify yourself anything in your name and your title. Hello, my name is Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be your CMA today. Explain why you are here and obtain the residence permission before starting the school. I'm here to do your vital signs. May I read your vital signs now? Wash your hands before touching the resident. This is a failing home. Hold, shut the privacy curtain or door. Apply gloves if needed, if they are needed, and perform the skill. So after hand washing and gloves, I have to teach you inside a little. So after hand washing and gloves, we'll take a break and we do gloving and hand washing. That's when we'll start doing our introductions. Do you have a question? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I watched a few videos mm -hmm. of how to start a skill, mm -hmm. and each one of them started the skill slightly different. So my question is, mm -hmm. does it matter what gets done first? For us, it does, because we're going to teach you HCC. We're, we're not going to deviate from it. You are allowed to be human, and you are allowed to be mistakes, but make mistakes. But considering that our students usually fail their skills because of hand washing, I need you to just trick your brain and go in, speak to the resident, and wash your hands because everything else is correctable, okay? But if you don't wash your hands, you do the whole skill, you'll be like, oh, nurse, correction. I didn't wash my hands. <laughs> and the nurse will look at you and be like, mm-mm. <laughs> All right, so on page 16, everybody. And then as far as our test is concerned, our orientation video tells you um, to only watch our videos. Because what's going to happen, especially if you're already working in the facility, everybody's going to try to teach you a different way. They can unteach what I taught after you pass your test. Because technically, they may have a faster way, but they don't know this test. If I know this test, I need you to pass your test. And after you pass your test, you can go out and do it the way that Joanne will show you. Because <laughs> Joanne's going to show you how to take care of 15 patients and to get a break. I'm not teaching you. You're going to be really tired if you do everything along the way. On page 16, indirect care. So these are, um, as you're performing the skills, you have to actually address standard precautions, infection control measures, and also the resident's right to comfort, privacy, and safety. So if um, we talked about the um, actual standard precautions. Oh, this is the other infection control measure. We have a patient who has C. diff. You don't know what C. diff is, but what you know is that as the CNA, you're in there cleaning their bottle because they had a bowel movement. And there's a large amount of diarrhea that smells really bad. Now you're in there, your legs are touching the bed, you're wiping a patient up, you don't know this is contagious, but you're smart enough to know, hey, nurse Eunice, when I was in a room cleaning up the patient in the room, whatever, whatever, her, she had a large amount of diarrhea that really smelled bad. And I'd be like, okay. I need you to go get a sample. Believe me, there's enough left. You take a tongue depressor, you take a specimen cup, like what we urinate in. You scoop up some, you put it in the cup. I'm calling the doctor to get the order. So we're having you get a specimen before I even have an order for it. I would recommend from here on out that you actually go in that room and gown and glove up because we don't know what this resident has, but we kind of are suspicious that it could be something that's contagious. You are a fast caregiver. You go into the next patient's room, she has cancer. She's on chemotherapy. What happens to her immune system? Is it strong? No, it's weak. It's weak. Your legs touch her bed. What did you just give her? The C The C diff. So now we have a cancer patient with a weakened immune system who now has extra diarrhea because chemotherapy already affects her GI tract. And now she may end up being on isolation also. So when we're telling you to not touch linens against your clothing, to not let your legs touch the bed, what I do in the classroom, in the clinical room, is I actually have you start all over again. And you're gonna get so mad at me until you're just like, <laughs> you're gonna have your arms out and nothing's gonna be touching you, nothing's gonna be touching the bed. But in reality, you're gonna be transferring germs from one patient to another, and we don't wanna do that. So while you're taking your test, your nurse is actually evaluating you. Are you letting things touch you? Are you fanning things in the air? If you're fanning your linens, what's being released in the air? Germs. Germs, what else? <coughs> I got asthma, what else is being released? If I'm fanning linens, dust, 
particles. And so you can make someone have an asthma attack. Promote resident comfort. What is the last sense that leaves? You have a patient who is nonverbal. You have a person who could be um, in the process of actively dying. What is the last sense that leaves? Hearing. Hearing. So you want to be really careful with what you say. You always say encouraging words. Even when someone is sedated under anesthesia, they will wake up out of anesthesia and tell you everything you said about them. So you want to be very careful. If a person is nonverbal, how do you know if they're in pain? So expressions, grimaces, what else? Will they make sounds if you turn them too roughly? Sometimes they'll moan. They'll moan? Okay, what happens with their vital signs? They'll, they'll be high. So you may not be able, Mr. Lucas may not be able to tell you he's in pain, but every time you move that leg, he says, mm, that should be a sign that something's wrong. Let your nurse know. Okay, so let's keep going. Promote resident safety. Oh, promote residents rights. Your residents have rights. Allow the resident to decide what they want to wear, what they want to eat, how they like their hairstyle. So in other words, they are not our kids. They get to participate in their care. So you want to include them. And the last one is promoting resident safety. If you'll highlight the last two sentences, there's a bold print there that says never. Never leave a resident who is at risk of injury alone. Stay with the resident and call for help while you are with the resident. We're almost to our break, everybody. Page 17. What does HCCD stand for? Documentation. If you all do not document it, you have no proof that it's done. So I need everybody to highlight HCCD. So at the beginning of our skill, we HCC. Then we do the skill being mindful of all those indirect care measures. And at the very end of our skill, we HCCD, but it does not have to be in that order. I just need you to get it done. Actually, I would like the H to be last, but I'm not going to change my acronym around. That's just going to be too much work. So at the end of your skill, if you took the call bell, the handheld device out of your resident's hands, so you can perform the skill, at the end of your skill, where do you put it back at? By the hand. By the hand. So what if by the hand is the side that they had a stroke? Oh, no. On the other hand. So not so directly in the a working hand, okay? Mm -hmm. So that way if they need to call for help, they can. So call bills in the hand. Um, and then don't forget, your older patients will have on three blankets. But they got like little layers. They'd be like toasty, and mm -hmm. under layer number one would be their tissue papers. Yeah. Layer number two would be their glasses. <laughs> so if you just put it on their blanket, I just put it in their hand, and I let them decide where it's going to go under which layer. But they'd be real creative with those layers of their blankets. Mm -hmm. What happens with the curtain at the end of the skill? How do you have it? You had it closed to provide privacy. What do you do at the end? And you open it. You don't want to leave them claustrophobic. At the test site, you open it. In the real world, you can just ask, would you like your curtain open? All right, so that was H, C. Come on in. I'll be right with you. H, C. Uh, no, that was C and C. Come on in there. Come on in. Hi. I'm sorry. We have, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. So we did our two C's, we did our curtain and our call bill. And now, um, documentation. It depends on whether or not your hands are gloved. If your hands are gloved, let's say you just got to M10, the urinary drainage bag. So you're going to have on gloves because you don't want to be contaminated with urine. Can you pick up your pen with gloved hands? No. So you have to take off your gloves, wash your hands, and then you can pick up your pen and document. So the only time your order really, really, really matters for your test is if your hands are gloved. When we're in the room, it will all make sense. Right now, I'm teaching you in silos. So it's like, okay, we talked about the intro. We talked about what happens during. We talked about what happens in the end. Now we get to put it all together, right? So you all are deserving of your first break. As far as your test, your orientation video will tell you how to register for your exam. Is there anybody here except for Shandrell who does not know how to register for their test? Watch the video. Who is going to be registered for their test within the next week? 
Okay, one person. All right, so for everybody else, how soon before you register for your test? Have you already done so? No? So I, I, I'd like to kind of like hold you accountable. So how soon before you register for your test? So you can actually register today if you feel comfortable. So if you have the finances, let's get this done because it takes about three weeks before you're actually tested. Okay? All right. Let me turn off the camera. So do we come back here for the test or we go to another site? You're going to go to another site. Okay. And so I'll make sure that we have you pull up that video online. Okay. There are two different test sites in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And I'll let you know the one that we recommend. Okay. okay. And I'll be right back. We'll turn off the camera. And then you all can get on up and take your first break. Mm -hmm.